Hey, how you doing out there in YouTube land? This stiletto coming at you from the Wild Wild West. Well, today, got an unboxing. This, I think this is an important one. I think this is an important one. One that I gave you guys, told you guys I might be, might be coming pretty soon. Here it is. Are you ready to unbox it? See what it is? Let me see, doing the unboxing today. Night that went to work with me. My mini Adamus. I absolutely love the mini Adamus. The mini Adamus is hot. I'm trying to show you how it drop shuts. I absolutely love it. It's an awesome knife. Awesome, 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 awesome bench mate. Definitely one of my new favorites. This one and the large one. And I found a D2 one. I think it's coming from a pawn shop. Doesn't have the doesn't have the original packaging or anything. But the knife looked really clean. So I went ahead and purchased it. Got a good got a good price on it. Really good price, as a matter of fact. If it's as nice as it looks. It looks like a brand new knife. Doesn't look like it's been used. It might have been slightly carried or something. Or maybe it was owned by somebody like me that just sort of collected it and used it every once in a while. Okay, here we go. Oh, this is like my, this is going to be like one of my grill knives because I've been wanting this knife super bad for a long time. And they're just so impossible to get. I mean, you can get these, but they're for ridiculous prices on the secondary market. And this is the one I told you guys about that I found on eBay and I asked you if I, if I paid a good price for it. So we're going to find out here in a second. So far, the box looks immaculate. Looks like a brand new knife. It's not a new knife though, people. It's not a new knife, it's used. But see, this person's like me. They keep the boxes, keep all the documentation, and that's how you get somebody to spend what I spent on this. This is one of my most expensive folders that I've ever purchased. It's a USA made. Made in USA. Yes, not in Taiwan. Demco knives. And it just says 8020, but it's an 8020 S. And it's the shark's foot, my favorite one. I like the shark's foot. I guess I can't say I like it the best. I, I, like, I like the other one too. But I've been carrying the shark's foot. Y'all know that. <laughs> Matter of fact, where's my shark's foot? Let's bring the shark's foot out here, huh? That's the one I've been carrying just about every day until I got this one. Now I've been carrying this one because it's this one's turn. But both of these knives are awesome. I think this might be one of my favorite knives of all time for smaller knives. What I mean by smaller knives, I'm going to say like three and a half inches or smaller. I even like it more than my Pentagon. And y'all know I love my Pentagon, my SOG Pentagon, Studies and Observation Group's Pentagon. But this one right here, and it's like it's like when I first got it though, it it was trying to kill me. I mean the the, the this needed to be um sand you know wet sand it down a little bit because it was like sharp. It was like biting in my fingers. But I, I I've been wanting one of these so long. I've been actually wanting one of these you know the big the full size one for so long. That um, since they've been coming, since they came out, every time I tried to get one, they were sold. And uh, the only way that you were able to get one is like on eBay or something, you know, for some, you know, for paying like three times as much as what it originally cost, or twice as much as what it originally cost. So that's a turnoff for me. I won't do that. I don't need to have a knife that bad. 
you know, even though if I do want it that bad, I still won't do that because I don't need to have a knife that bad. For that amount of money, I can buy, you know, for like four or five hundred dollars, I can get, you know, three or four, you know, really nice knives. Because there's a lot of knives in between, you know, I, don't, I, don't, I would say even, I would, I would go as low as like about, I'm going to go low. I'm going to say there's not, the nice knives actually start, you know, because I've purchased a lot of knives la the last couple of years that were budget knives, and they were absolutely really nice knives. Now, I know they're made in China and all that kind of stuff, but, you know, you got, you know, I got, I got to keep it 100% real. You know, they are some not really nice knives that they're making for under $50. So I'm going to say, like, you know, from around $35 or maybe even $30, I'll just say $30, $30 up to about $200. You can find a lot of really nice knives. You don't need to spend three hundred, four hundred, five hundred dollars on a pocket knife, unless you just want something that's like a, a you know a super duper collector or or something that's really rare or something that's handmade. You know, I can see paying that much money for a handmade knife, but not for a knife that comes from a factory, a production knife. I think production knives when they get over two hundred dollars, I think that's kind of ridiculous. That's just the way I think. Because production knives mean that they're made in mass quantities and I don't know. The attention to detail is never as good as like a handmade something or you know, like like one one of these Demco customs from the custom shop. Even though all the parts I think pretty much are machine made, it's all hand assembled by either um John or Andrew. Either John or Andrew, you know, went, you know, did the, did the assembly on this. So that's, this is my first knife that's like that. And so, but anyway, I'm talking too much again, huh? I always do that. But I absolutely love this knife. And, you know, and you, you all know how I was at first. You know, it's all about the materials. It's like, no, man, you know, I don't know if this is worth 150 bucks or whatever I paid for it. It was $149, I think it was. And uh, I said, oh, man, I love Oz 10, Oz 10A. I love it. I love AUS-10A. Japanese AUS-10A. It's a great steel. It's much better than... It's, it's not even the same type of category as like an Oz-8A, in my opinion. Oz-8A is, is soft. It's a soft steel, but it's still good as like a utility knife steel, like something that you can you, you need to be able to resharpen really quickly or something like that. oz is perfect for that. And, you know, it's, it's durable, too. You know, it doesn't chip, it rolls instead of chipping pretty much. And, uh, you know, so, you know, so I, I, I still use my Oz 8A knives. I still carry and use those. But um, Oz 10A is more like a, um, I know, like an ATS 34 or, or a um, CPM. Or, or I wouldn't say CPM, maybe like a 154 CM. Like an ingot, like a better ingot steel. You know, because it. Ten years ago, this would have been a premium steel. Oz 10A. At one time, Oz 8A was a premium steel. At one time, 420J, the Japanese version of 420, was a premium steel. And so was HC. HC was better than that. Then, then came the 440s and and 440C and uh, that, that was the other one, 440A. That was like a, the one that wasn't that really that good. But, but 440C was good. And Benchmade used to use that all the time. And then like ATS 34, then M, M2 Speed, Speed Steel or something like that that Benchmade used to have. I remember I used to have some AFCKs with that steel on it. And, but that was really hard to resharpen. I hated that steel. And that's before I really knew how to resharpen things. That and that's before they had like diamond stones and stuff. They had that, that they had that M two. I think it was called M two, and it was considered like a, it was like an M four sort of, but it was like pre M four. They had M two, and um, that still it came to you razor sharp. It was really razor sharp on the AFCKs, and um, was AFCKs advanced fighting knife or something? I, I don't know. It was, it was a black class knife. And that's the one that cut me up. It was my, one of my AFCKs. But um, that steel, 
it was, you know, it would hold the edge really good and stuff like that. But when it did get dull and you had to resharpen it, uh-uh. Because, you know, we, we only had like ceramic stones and stuff like that back then. And, uh, you know, regular old Arkansas stones and things like that. And uh, that was a hard steel to resharpen. So I didn't, I, that's why, that's why I used to get turned off to like the, what they would call like super steels or anything like that. Because I always knew they were like, the hardness on them was too hard and it would be like hard to resharpen. And I wasn't the best at resharpening. But I always did like to keep my knife sharp. And so like, the, the steel's like 440C, that was a good steel for me. And um, I remember the butt used to have the 440, I mean 420HC, that with the Boss heat treatment. And that was a good steel too for me. I used to carry buck knives. But... Austin A, Austin A is a great steel. It's a great steel. Personally, I'd rather have this than D2. Why? Because it's stainless. And it keeps a good edge. It keeps the edge good enough for me. But anyway, let's get into this one. Went and talking way too long now. Look at the Dimco stuff there. Let's see it. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, man. Centered out perfect. It's got the grivery skills. These are grivery. They feel a lot like this, though. Oh, the pattern's even the same. That's why they feel a lot like this. But this has got the big American pivot, so I know that's different, as opposed to the, the Taiwanese pivot. So that's different. It's got a little weight to it. Ooh. The edge looks good. It doesn't look like it's ever been damaged. I think I got a good one. I think I got a good one. So these don't have stainless steel liners that go all the way through them though, huh? It's just a, a this is a, um, a thick slab. Sort of like a, um, like the SR1. And it's got partial stainless steel liners. So they, it's probably just got stainless steel liners. I've never taken one of these apart, so I can't tell you for sure yet. But I do plan on, you know, yeah, you know what I mean? I'm going to take it apart and do what I got to do to it. Check it out. But it, it's got like um, the stainless steel back spacers, barrel spacers. And then it looks like the frame starts like right in here. Right here on this spacer. This pivot right here. And then it goes all the way forward. And it looks thick too. Look how, look how thick that is. And you made this knife so I know it's the real deal. Ooh. 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 <laughs> I love it. Okay, people, this is the one I told you I paid 300 for on eBay. Got it for 300 bucks. I think brand new when these first came out, they were like 275. And I love it so much better without the hole. I like this model. This is the model for me. And the blade thickness is nice. It looks like it's about the same. I think the blade thick thickness on the smaller one and this one are the same. So it's probably got what, I think it was 3.2? Was it 3.2 millimeters? We'll check it out. 3.2 or 3.3 or something like that. 125 thousandths. Oh man, I'm so happy I got this. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You were looking out for me. Answer my prayers. <laughs> love it. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. I absolutely love it. Oh, man. I finally got a big AD-10. I know it's not the full, I know it's not the full thickness one, but I don't really want the full thickness one. I like the S model. And I know, I know, that, I know that they'll be making custom handle scales for these, and you guys will see me modify it. You guys will see me modify this one with custom handle scales. Because I, I want to put, um, like, I don't know, either the Micarta. You know what I really like to put on this one? Would be the natural JG10. 
I think that would look super tough with natural jade G10. But these knives have become my favorite. They become my favorite. Oh, this one's super smooth right off the bat. It's not. It's not like this one. It's not a hell razor. <laughs> this one feels totally comfortable to use. This is more comfortable than than this one is. Was this one's like perfectly comfortable? Oh man, it's gonna be carried. It's going in the box, people. It's not gonna be a. This this one's not gonna be a safe queen. This is gonna be a. A highly, highly, highly carried knife. Probably these two knives will probably be my most carried. I got, I got to tell the truth. These are my two favorite knives now. And I love the Adamas. I love the Adamas. Where's my, where's my big Adamas? The Adamas is right behind it. I like the Adamas too. I love the Adamas too. They're right behind these. Papa Bear, Baby Bear, Yogi and Boo Boo. <laughs> no, actually these are shark, huh? These are sharks. So we got, we got, I gotta think of a, this is the great white. I'm gonna say this is the great white. Uh, okay. Uh, what's this one, a bull shark? That, that, that's probably, a, it's a smaller, smaller, but badass little shark. That's a bull shark. This is just a big ass badass shark. This is this is a, that's a great white jaws. This one's jaws. Mm-hmm. Absolutely love it. I'm digging it. I'm digging it. What you think, sweetie? You like it too? Can you guys see Juno? She's over here messing with me. Yes, my girl. Alright, let's let's check out some specs on it. Oh man, I'm so happy. Today is a good day. And I got a ticket today. I got a parking ticket on my Harley. I had to go to a doctor's appointment. And they, they didn't allow me to park inside the, um, in the Kaiser parking, parking lot. So I had to park on the street. And the meter, all I had was my um, ATM card. I didn't have any change. I had some bills, but I didn't have any change. 3.27. And this one is three point one seven, so it's just slightly thicker than that one. Three point one seven. The handle thickness from about the middle of the handle in front of the pocket clip, around the second, was it the third pin? I'm right on the third pin. You got 13.49, or 13 and a half. And this one, on the second, on the, that same pin, is 9.8. So you can see this one has a nice girth to it. How thick is this one compared to that? This one's 16. So it's, it's, this one's even thicker, wider. And we know that's wider than this one. We don't really have to even go there. And yeah, this one's 15. 15 and a half. And this one was... 13 and a half. I think this is perfect. I think this one is perfect for me. This one is perfect. And it's got the shark block. I got total faith in this lock, like a, like a triad lock. But this lock is fun. This is one of the funnest locks ever. And to me, the only thing that can really compete with it would be like the um, XR lock. I like the XR lock, or the, and then, then after that would be the Axis lock. I like the X, XR lock more than the Axis lock because it's more fun. But the, but the Axis lock, on Benchmade's Axis locks, they're smoother. They're smoother than the SOG's version of the crossbar lock. But the SOG version of the crossbar lock, they have a flipper. And so there's like, they have flippers and um, thumb studs and everything. So you can open them up like, you know, several different ways. These are thumb stud knives. 
but they're you know they operate they don't have hardly any detent so they they open real easy with finger flicks or thumb or if you're using a thumb stud. These are Martians. <laughs> These are a brother from another mother. <laughs> I absolutely love the Andrew Demko um, AD twenties, the twenty point fives and and the you know I, I don't have one that the the full thickness ones, but this one, I think this is the perfect size right here. Tell you the truth, you know, for you know, if you're gonna use it for an EDC knife, because it doesn't feel too heavy. Let me see how heavy it is. We didn't weigh it yet, huh? Yep, 5.1 ounces. That's a perfect weight. 3.5. 5.1 and 3.5. I think this one's supposed to weigh 3.6. Yeah, there it goes. 3.6. 3.6. And the Domus's 4.6. This is a good this one that I have carried this one to work. It's a very fun knife to carry to work. It's not too heavy. It's, it's a good knife. I would say this is a good EDC knife for somebody that wants something sort of tactical. You know, because this is a real tactical knife. You know, I, I shouldn't say sort of tactical. This is tactical. You know, this is a Domus. This, this is the real deal. It's just this. I wouldn't even call this, I don't know why they're calling it a mini. It's really like a medium. I would call it a medium sized knife. Any knife that I could put all four of my fingers on, I call medium size. A mini size is like a three finger knife to me. This is not a three finger knife. I could put my full grip on this. And I I don't know what size my hands are compared to like David C. Anderson's. I know he's got he says he's got the big hands, but I get I get a nice full grip on this. I wear um extra large motorcycle gloves, but they don't fit me super tight. I like my gloves to be a little bit more comfortable. So I might be a real like a like a maybe like a large size glove if it had to fit me tight. So that could sort of let you know what size my hand is. But this one is I it, my hand feels totally comfortable on this knife. I mean it feels really comfortable. It feels like my it, you know with the with the with the axis lock I think it's sort of a good thing that that your hand is like sort of pushing on the axis lock bar itself because that's going to help it keep from becoming disengaged. See what I'm saying? Because like where you hold it, like if you really, if you want to make this knife like a fixed plate, you hold the axis lock. You hold the crossbar by both sides. This knife ain't going nowhere. That, that knife wouldn't go anywhere. You know, if you really need to have a super strong lock for if you're doing some kind of cutting chore or something like that, it's easy to hold the axis lock. But it's also easy to bump it loose too, so you got to be careful about that. But axis locks rock. Axis locks were the first lock knives, lock type knives that I carried. It was like back in the early 2000s. And I had a AFC, AFC K, I think it was an 805 or something like that. It had the um, D2 blade. I th think it was a D2 blade. The D2 blade Benchmate. I'm talking about Benchmate. And that was an awesome knife. And I carried that one for a super long time. And it was all beat up. Because I used to carry it every day. That was like before I was into trying out a bunch of different knives. So I carried the same knife all the time. And it never failed me. I never even I never broke an Omega spring on it or anything. The only one I've broken Omega springs on is my 391 BK. But they're easy to replace and Omega springs are cheap. So I don't even know why people freak out about that. And when you break them, you only you usually only break one. One will break, and the other one will still be functional. So the knife will still be functional. It'll function, you know, until you get another mega spring, or you replace both mega springs. And they actually, you know, and the and the reason why mine mine broke on the on the three ninety one BK is because I constantly fidgeted with it for like six months, and I think the first mega spring I broke was on after three months. And then I just replaced that one side, and then I broke the other side. <laughs> and then I just replaced both sides at the same time, and then I greased them. That's why I started greasing them. I've never broken one since. You know, and it's been like over a year since then, since the last time I broke one. 
that these knives are awesome. The, the Adamases, the new Adamases with the crew wear, they rock. One thing that they have over these knives, though, is that these two got the materials. I mean, they got really nice G10 handle scales. The, the handle scales are, are, are beautiful. The heat treated liners are super strong and tough. Heat, heat treated stain, thick heat treated stainless steel liners. And then you got the crew wear blades. And they're, they're strong crew wear blades. They're not some weak little EDC knife crew wear blades. So they're, they're, they're capable of heavy duty work. Beautifully made knives. This one I got for $169. This one I paid $149 for. And this one has Oz 10A. It's a good steal, but I don't know if it's worth being on a $150 knife, you know. I know, I know, but this is a production knife, though. This is not, uh, this is not like this one. This one's in a different category because this was put together by hand by either Andrew or John. And so, you know, their labor is worth something, right? I think it is. I know my labor is worth something. But this was put together with inexpensive labor in Taiwan. At the Cold Steel Factory, you know, where they make, where they have a history of making some beautiful knives, you know, that we've all loved. But, We've all bought those knives for under hundred dollars too, and they're bigger, with better steels, and G10. <laughs> so I think this one should have had G10, and and I don't know. Oz 10A is okay for the steel. I'm not gonna knock the steel, but at least give me some G10 or Macarta or something like that. Something over Grivery. I, this Grivery on this one, it looks more like um, G10. It doesn't look like Grivery. It's like they, they sandblast, bee blasted it or did something to it. Because it has more of a, um, I don't know, more like a natural look to it. and Not natural, but it doesn't look plasticky. It looks more like G10. Even though I know it's grivery. This is definitely a grivery knife. But I'm absolutely digging it. These knives rock. These knives rock. I'm going to give this guy an awesome feedback. Oh, man. I know this, this, and I know it's only got... Um, oh, this one's D2. I'm sorry. Did I say it was Oz 10? This one's supposed to be D2, if I'm not mistaken. Let me see. Where can we find it? Yep, D2. It says it right in here. I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see it. It needs to be cleaned up a little bit. It says it right in here. Right in here on the on the blade tag. But anyway, it's D2, and it, this is supposed to be German D2. It's not Chinese D2 or whatever. It's supposed to be Bowler, Bowler K110 or something like that. Um, D2 steel, German D2, ingot, ingot, G D2 steel. It's not the, it's not the CPM. It's the, it's the, um, original Bowler D2 from Germany. This plate, this knife was, you know, everything comes from, as far as I know, it comes from, um, Wampum PA. This, that's where the, that's where this knife was made. See, oh, totally American made knife. Now, I've heard some people say that the, the actual lock bar and the handle scales are made at the Taiwan factory, at the Cold Steel Taiwan factory. But I don't know. The box says it's made in USA, so I don't know. I don't know if the people know what they're talking about or if it's true or what. Oh, okay, wait a minute. No, it, it, that probably is true because it says made in USA with both foreign and domestic parts. So probably the probably the scales and the lock bar. That's probably that might be true then. Can you guys read that? So that might be true. Okay. But this is a German steel blade. Let's see if it's sharp.
<laughs> oh man, this is a good one. It's just gliding through this paper. Beautiful. Compare it to this. Well, this one's been used a lot. So don't expect it to be razor sharp. Still holding its edge though. It's doing its thing. Got a little hiccup there. I can feel a couple little hiccups in it. It probably needs to be stropped. I haven't stropped it. That's, that's the original factory edge that you guys just saw right there. That's been used for, what, over a week now? Absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. All right. Well, that's about it for that. I'm going to go ahead and stop this one now. Absolutely. I'm so glad I got these. I'm so glad I got these. And this one, I love it without the hole. This might be, you might be looking at my favorite knife right here. This might be my favorite knife now. Absolutely love it. AD20 S. Ray Grivery Scales. Shark's Foot Blade. Razor Shark. Made in Wampum, PA. By either John Demko or Andrew Demko. One or the other. Whoever did it, they did an excellent job. It's a beautiful knife. It's definitely one of my holy grails. I finally got it. I finally got it. I finally got one. I got the real deal. I love it. Love it. Peace. Saleta. Have a great night.